Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Riding Horses. So, <clears throat> I'm out here today. We're going to put a, a saddle on your horse today. Only I didn't let her know she was going <laughs> to. <laughs> this is going to be fantastic. So, <clears throat> I'm going to just kind of let you guys hear me talk through the process of what I'm after when I'm thinking about saddling one for the first time, maybe how I use this round pin. I'm not gonna do all the work. Obviously, I'm gonna be the one putting the saddle on, but I'm gonna let my wife move this rascal around a little bit to get him ready for the saddle. So, depending on how long this takes, we might cut some of this out so you guys aren't watching an hour's worth, but the big thing to remember is <clears throat> when we drag that saddle off the fence, <clears throat> anything noise and movement that bothers my horse, Okay, I start dragging stuff out here, there's a good chance it's only going to bring that out in a more. So I want a horse like this. I'm not trying to ride him today, I just want to saddle him. I want him in a frame where he's thinking, you know what, I'd like to stand here and catch my breath a little bit versus just shy at everything he does, dragging that stuff off the fence. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to crawl back here on the fence and just sit where I can still talk to the camera. I'm going to let you move him around a little bit. You can see him standing back here. He's standing somewhat quiet. You can see his nostrils moving. I've had her lope him around a little bit while we were getting our gear ready. But I'm going to let you lope him a little bit more, and then I'll tie the lead rope back to him and play around with him a little bit where we're not just using the round pin to basically dictate the size of the circle, okay? So I, I want him to lope a little bit more. I think this horse could trot for days, okay? And I clearly don't want to be out here that long to get him in that frame of mind trotting. So let's lope him a few more circles and see how he acts. Let me crawl up here on the fence. <clears throat> you want the flag or you want this? Okay. He's a little bit sweaty. That's good. So I'm just going to sit right up here Thanks to MJE for the use of this round pin. I think this is the best round pin I've ever had. <clears throat> as far as starting colts in, this is the biggest round pin I've ever used. It's about 75 feet, uh, six foot tall. I prefer a round pin that a horse can see through. I know a lot of guys that want it solid where the horse can't see out, where there's no distractions outside. I don't necessarily like that. I want my horses to be able to turn loose of the distractions out there and focus on me without me trying to eliminate those outside distractions. So again, thank you to MJE for allowing us to use this round pin. All right, baby, you ready to roll? You pick the direction. <clears throat> you can pick the speed. Our cameraman's going to try to do his best to stay on paths. So a lot of the time, Buffy's not going to be in the picture. So this horse hasn't been worked at all. He's been standing in the pen on full alfalfa feed, eating 20 pounds of alfalfa a day. <clears throat> and he's dang sure got some energy, but she's loped him around here a little bit where he's, his head's not quite as high. His eyeballs aren't over the top rail of the panel anymore. <clears throat> I made a joke before we started to my wife that not only would he have his ears higher than his withers, he'd probably have his nostrils higher than his withers for a while. <clears throat> but if, you, if you've ever got a horse that struggles to stand still, this right here is a really good approach to get them in a frame of mind where they'd like to stand still. And I'm not trying to wear him out. I'm just trying to get him in a frame of mind where he's not so reactive to stuff but on the same token, I'm trying to maybe get that energy tank where it's not overflowing. If he's got so much stored energy that he can't hardly control himself, 
the slightest noise, the slightest movement on my part or my wife's part is just going to cause him to be more reactive. So next time around over here, let's let him stop and rest for a second. Somewhere over here on this side. We'll just watch him here for a second. Just stay right there. Licking his lips, moving his ears. His nostrils are now officially lower than the top of his withers. His head's coming down a little bit. It just keeps coming down. <clears throat> so a guy can come out here with the intent to saddle him today or he can come out here and just kind of play around here with him and get this horse kind of headed in the direction that he wants. But the goal is to get him where that's what I'm trying to get him to think right there, where they're not so reactive to every little thing. And the best way to get these rascals to find a different frame of mind is to get them mobile enough that pretty soon the idea of being mobile, maybe I'll say it this way, isn't quite so fun. <laughs> Horse fresh and he's reactive, being mobile is a lot of fun. But if they're mobile long enough, Pretty soon it's not much fun anymore, and you end up with something more like that. <clears throat> so our goal as we get him going, our goal is for this horse to learn to carry himself about there, top line wise, or a little bit lower with his head. Okay, but man, you get that rascal moving around here loose, and he looks like he's part giraffe, doesn't he? <laughs> when he's that fresh. All right, let's go this way one more time. Next time around over here, we'll let him stop and rest. Well, okay. I, I almost said just don't stop him right in front of me because I was going to cr crawl down off the fence, but he saw me move there, so he gave me some room. No, nah, he's fine. Now he's torn because because now I'm moving. He's he's right here close to me. He was in a position when he stopped where he couldn't see me, and then he heard me moving back here and he repositioned himself a little bit. But I like this as I crawl here off the fence. He's watching me and not just running off. They say horses bred like him are making good rope horses and barrel horses, so we know he's got some go. Hold that for just a second. So I would almost say it this way. If you were going to just saddle him, you get these horses a little bit, dare I say it this way, a little bit too tired, but all you're gonna do is saddle them. It's not a big deal. If your intent was to saddle him and ride him, well, I gotta leave enough energy in there so when I get on, I can get him to move, okay? We're just, we're just putting a saddle on him today. <clears throat> but it's probably, would probably be wise for somebody that doesn't, handle a lot of horses or isn't experienced with young ones, if you could give yourself a week of just saddling them rascals and not worried about riding them, 
where you can get them really good at the saddling process. So then if you got to work them a little bit longer and get them a little bit more, what I might say, ready to stand still, just so you can get the saddle on, why don't you, babe, babe, why don't you head towards my gear over there? You can hang out over there for a second. I'll just have you bring me stuff as I need it. I don't think he's worked as hard as what his body's trying to tell him, as sweaty as he is. About the only thing we've done with him is trim his feet. <clears throat> and we can trim his feet pretty good. We don't have to tie him up. I can just hang the lead rope on the ground. I might bring him over here in the round pin and move him around a little bit until he really wants to stand good. And then he's pretty darn easy to trim. This stuff right here <clears throat> is what he hasn't seen much of. I'm not trying to move him with this lead rope. Just trying to make some noise and some movement with it. Let him figure out it's not as bad as he thought, but him trying to react to it right there, babe, when you first got him moving around, he was holding his tail about as high as his head. Clearly, he'd have been way more reactive to that All right, can I see that stick and string? Thank you, babe. Now, I tend to have a little bit more of an approach where, see if you can see me do this. Instead of me doing this, I'm, I'm a little bit more careless about it for two reasons. Number one, I think if you creep around one, you just cause them to be that, more, that much more alert and reactive to stuff. And number two, I want them where I can, where I can move around and relax and not have to worry about oh I moved too fast so the whole point in me having him in this round pin or having him on the lead rope but not trying to make him stand still is let him figure out if he wants to be reactive and move around it's just going to be more work That's pretty big change so far. The other side, not much at all, just a little bit on this side. But you can see how relaxed that eye is already. Can I swap you for the flag? Now he's seen this flag before when I was trimming his feet, but it's been, it's been a little while. She was out here moving him around with it. But again, this just lets you guys see what it looks like for a horse to be reactive. 
gotten a little bit shorter on my lead rope just so I can get a little closer to him, but so I can control his nose a little bit more. Not trying to make him stand still. And then little by little, as that flag gets up there, I can rub on him with it. Now, the reason I went to him the way I did today is because he's seen this flag before when I was trimming his feet. So I've played the game where I've been out here making noise with it, walking away from him, getting him to follow it. length of my flag here where I can touch him on the butt that hind leg of his is longer than this flag so I if I'm gonna be this close where I can touch him with the flag I want my lead rope short enough that I could control the nose just so if he did try to kick the flag or kick at the flag he wouldn't kick me I don't think he'd kick me on purpose he might kick at that flag and forget to stop his foot when it got to the flag and it go right past the flag and hit me. So for my wife's sake, her other horse is pretty short, quite a bit shorter than this one. This rascal is gonna have to be really, really gentle and really, really quiet and stand still so she can climb her herself on up there. Right, babe? Stool? You might need a stool. We'll get him where he'll stand good. I always like to start up here with my flag so I'm away from their legs, I'm behind their drive line, they're not kicking at it if I'm trying to get up here. If they can't stand still they're usually just going forward. I need your attention over here partner, I'm quite sure what you're looking at over there, but I need you over here. So that was just me coming at that eye a little bit closer. That's a perfect example of something outside this round pin catching his attention. All right, you can take this.
once he gets where he's not so bothered by stuff around his head, around his eye, his head won't be so high. Otherwise, you're going to need to still just bridle him. But we weren't thinking about how tall he was going to be when you purchased him, correct? Yeah. What were we thinking about? Oh, that's sure a pretty color, right? Yeah, and his bloodlines. Blood Can you hand me that lunge line on the ground, please? Well, if he fills out anything like his daddy, he's going to look pretty good. So you see how I'm doing this? He's he's really looking more at the at the lunge line on that side versus me standing over here. So when I throw that saddle up there, it's gonna have a stirrup hanging on both sides. He's gonna see that saddle on both sides, but I can only stand on one side. What I don't want him to do is spook at that saddle on the opposite side of where I'm standing and then he jumps and lands right on top of me. So when I'm doing this, I'll put my hand or my arm up against him. So if he does move my direction, it'll, it'll push me back out of the way and not just knock me over. And take to this pretty good. What's that? My wife said then I can compliment her for picking him out. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I will do that. And I'll really compliment you when we sell him. This is just going to let me kind of introduce him to what the cinch is going to feel like a little bit as I pull on this, let him move around. I'm just going to get him walking around me here and just pull on this lunge line a little bit. So me pulling on that to some degree is going to feel like that me pulling that cinch up. Now when I saddle one for the first time I put a back cinch on them from day one. <clears throat> and if I have one, I'd probably put a breast collar on them too. <clears throat> I mean, to me, <clears throat> I've, I've dealt with too many horses that were bothered by a back cinch, didn't get introduced to it later in life. <clears throat> they got to get used to that front cinch. You just well tie the back one on there, they can get used to it at the same time. And then Hopefully you never have another issue with that back cinch after that. I can't tell you how many times I've had somebody tell me, well, he doesn't like my back cinch. That's why he's bucking or that's why he's kicking at my foot or whatever. So me putting this rope back here, 
is not just to get him ready for the back cinch, get him used to that feel. Here's what I'm really thinking in my mind. I'm trying to get him in a frame of mind where when I pull that back cinch up and buckle it, it doesn't scare him and he blow up and go to bucking and kicking right then while I'm standing next to him. <clears throat> Once I turn them loose and they get to traveling around there, they can do whatever they want. I just want enough time to get it put on them. I'm really pulling on it right there. Yeah, so I'm pulling on that right now way more than, than what he's gonna feel from that back cinch. Yeah, lowering his head, licking his lips. I like that a lot. I always like to play around with these hind legs if I can. Sometimes it's it's a little harder to do than, I was a little bit long on my lead rope right there, but because he wasn't panicking, I was able to shorten up. But I've just about got to hold that above his hocks, which I haven't even got it there yet. If I could get it above his hocks, it wouldn't pull on my hand as much. But I love to let him walk out of it like that. So when he gets like that, I just get shorter on that lead rope. I don't try to tell him, when I get short on that lead rope, I don't try to tell him to stop his feet. I just tip his nose to me a little bit more and say, well, if you're gonna go, your circle's gonna get a little smaller, bud. And then I just wait on him. So he's got some work to do on this side. But it's way different than it was. Okay, I'll trade you this for that saddle pad. Do what? Put that around. Like a, like a curving structure. She just asked if I would. So I put that around his belly and pulled on it, standing on this side. She asked if I would typically do it on that side. Not always. Really, that is to let him feel you can snap this back on that ring. To let, feel. To let him feel it get tight around his barrel. Okay. But. <clears throat> I would say this, since he's more bothered by it on this side, I might say this, if I do that for the next four or five days we work him, I'll just do it from this side, give him more time to see me on this side. It's always a good idea, whatever you do on one side, do it on the other side. I put that on him today so I could kind of give him the idea of what that cinch is gonna feel like. If you'll hand me that pad. So the next time we work him, we'll put that on him on the ground. We'll just do it from his left side. Thank you. So probably about, probably about there. 14 foot lead rope, I gotta keep it off the ground so if he's moving, I don't get tangled up in it, he doesn't get tangled up in it. When I'm in this close, I'd like to be able to keep his nose tipped to me just a little bit. Just so I can make it a little safer for me. Not that he's prone to kick, but Hey, when a horse thinks about kicking, he can think about it and carry out that thought sometimes faster than you can even see it coming. 
Then you're laying on the ground wondering, what did I just do to get kicked? Happened to me many times. And not one time did it ever feel good. <laughs> and probably, majority of the time, the horse wasn't even kicking at me. He was kicking at whatever object I was trying to put on him. He just missed what he was kicking at. I was the lucky recipient. Nice. Okay. Swap me this for those chinks hanging right there behind you, if you would. And then we'll drag that saddle out here. So I like these chinks because they're a little bit lighter weight than that pad and they make a little bit noise, the fringe on these chinks. And all I'm going to do is just kind of sack him out with these chinks like I would the saddle pad or like I'm going to the saddle, but I don't wear myself out in the process. So when I swing it up over his back, I'm going to get a little bit shorter on that lead rope where I have that hanging over there. <clears throat> a lot of times you keep them chinks back behind his shoulder, they're pretty good. Say I, well I'll just show you. I swing them over there and I get them way up there in front of that shoulder. All right, there's a lot of, a lot of times on some horses you just gotta be aware of, of what your horse you're, you're dealing with is thinking. That right there can get you pawed in the face or, or knocked down. So just be aware of it. If we're working with one that's really bad about that, we had one last year that was pretty bad about it. So we just did most of that off another horse. So when they'd get bothered and they'd go to jumping around, they weren't putting us in danger because we were sitting on another horse. So just remember that, babe, on them young horses, you get something right in that spot. If they're bothered by anything down in here, if he's bothered by them chinks, those chinks are out, gonna outweigh me. He ain't jumping away from me, he's jumping away from them. He lands right on top of me. That makes sense? So think of it this way, that's me kind of swinging my saddle up there now where my stirrups can come down. That's really good. That's what I like using these chinks for because I can simulate swinging that saddle up there, and that stirrup coming over and bumping him. But these chinks are so much lighter. I don't wear myself out trying to get it done. If that makes sense at all. Okay, now we'll I'll drag that saddle out here. No, let me grab it. No, no, just leave it all. I'm gonna need that pad once I go to tie this saddle on. So, no pad, no cinches. I got everything off this saddle that I can take off easily just to make it lighter weight. There's, there's no sense in the beginning. And I don't have one, but if I had a little lightweight barrel saddle, I'd use it. But my plan is I want to be able to put it on and take it off and not just think, well, I'm just going to throw it up there one time and tie it on. I don't think it's fair to the horse myself. I think you should have to spend enough time with your horse for him to allow you to swing that saddle up there before you should try to tie it on. So take that stuff off so it's a little lighter weight. I just need your head over here so you don't forget what I'm doing.
Now, depending on the horse, okay, I don't really see him being that reactive, but majority of the time, I'm not gonna sit it up there like this and then lead him off somewhere without holding on to it. Because on some colts, they get spooked and they move and that saddle comes off and it hits the ground and it scares them and it sets you back two weeks. <clears throat> some colts, it wouldn't be a big deal, but I've had my hands on plenty of them that it was a huge deal. So, especially where he's at today, I don't feel like I've, he's probably not the kind that would make that big a deal out of it. But I'm still gonna go at him as if he was to where I wouldn't even leave it there and switch sides and go pull it off the other side just yet. Cause I haven't even put it on from the other side. So I'd pull it off this side and we'd swap sides. Again, if you're dealing with a horse that's been handled, a horse that's not super reactive, it's probably not as big a deal. But I have had my hands on a plenty that if I could keep anything from going bad during the saddling process, it was well to my advantage in doing that. Just so. Okay. I'm gonna need the pad, the cinches. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna throw this up on the fence. I'm gonna put my cinches on my saddle now. Can you hand me those cinches there? We're going to add the breast collar later. Kind of guess where he's at. Are we too close to the camera there, Cody? Can you even get me in there? What do you got me about from the ears up? So I prefer to, and again, this is just from me saddling a bunch of horses that were really sensitive about stuff. I'm gonna take my cinches off like I did to put my saddle on a time or two. And then when I'm ready to tie it on, I'm gonna put my cinches on before I put it back up there. Instead of it sitting on his back and asking him to stand long enough for me to put these on, okay? Until I get him to where he's worn it around here. Okay. <clears throat> now, probably wouldn't hurt me none I didn't do it. And again, this is just my brain working. That flea cinch on some colts is gonna really catch her eye. Probably would be a smart thing to, for me to have thought of before I tied those cinches on there was to just rub him with that cinch. I don't think it's gonna be a, as big a deal on him. Some of them, yeah. It would have been. Now this is going to be way different. Babe, I'm going to have you go ahead and step outside the pin. Just lean all that stuff up on the outside if you would. Lean it all up on the outside. I'll come get it when I need it.
Now, normally, I'm not going to care where he's standing or how he's standing when I saddle him. Would be kind of nice if you guys could see what I'm doing. But if he gets to moving around here, I'm going to have to just go with him and not worry so much about what the camera can see or not see. So this will be the first time that I leave it up there and I switch to this other side. And then here I'm just going to reach down there and grab my cinch. I'm just going to hold it up here. I'm just going to pull on it a little bit. <clears throat> now he was he was super good with the I like that. He was super good with the rope. As long as I'm holding it here with my fingers, I can abort mission anytime I need to. Whew, big deep breath there. Good job, bud. It's not until I start running this latigo through this cinch that I'm committed. What I mean by committed is once I start running this latigo through here, I am committed to finishing the process of getting this cinch tight enough to simply hold the saddle in place. <clears throat> now he's, he's big enough. I think that's tight enough it would hold it for the time being. He's gotten a little bit tighter. I've got it hooked. It would stay put. <clears throat> when I go for a cinch, I don't, I always look forward and I say, well, I'm going to keep my head as far away from his back legs as I can. If you're going to kick me when I grab that cinch, I want you to kick me in the butt, not the head. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this up one more hole. This is going to be pretty snug just because I can't take a risk of this saddle rolling. This is a pretty wide back cinch, so it's going to, it's going to cover a lot of area, so I've got it pretty snug. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> here's the fun part. <laughs> Sometimes you spend all that time getting them to where you can get them saddled, okay? You turn them loose with that saddle, they get to moving around, they get scared of that saddle, and they come hunt you up quickly and say, save me. And when he's running at me, bucking it from the saddle, running at me trying to save him, I really can't do much. So a person needs to be aware of that. Watch out, babe. You want to get on him real quick, babe? Woo! I don't need you over here. I don't need you over here, dude. You can go do all that you want. You got to do it somewhere else. So, what are you thinking, babe, as he's jumping around there? What do you think you're, you should be able to use some frequent flyer miles when you ca crawl on him or what? Now, this is, this, is, this is my opinion on this scenario. I know a lot of people that are gonna saddle a horse like this and do everything they can to make sure this horse never bucks with that saddle on. So they probably wouldn't even turn him loose. They probably would have kept him on the line and tried to get him moving around there real slow and try to do everything they could to keep that from happening. I'm not that guy. I'm gonna look at it this way. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna saddle you enough times that you're not gonna to have to worry about that anymore. <laughs> now, there's been many times where I've saddled them the first time and 15, 20 minutes later, I'm sitting on their back riding them for the first time. 
Not that you can't do that, but I'm more of the guy that says, why don't we do this? Why don't we show you that you don't have to act that way? I don't ever want to be that guy that does things around my horse to try to keep them from doing something. Because then I find myself tiptoeing around them trying to keep something bad from happening. Let's go the other way. I mean, you can't blame one. If they truly are a prey animal and you tie something to their back and they can feel it grabbing them around the belly, wouldn't you try to get rid of it too? <laughs> Here's what I find so funny. Back in my granddad's era, they would have done all that and before that colt ever walked off, somebody would have crawled on. I'm like, why don't you at least let them go feel the saddle moving before you get up there? But they were a lot tougher than, than my era, I guess. Now, I'm really big on, I'm going to turn one loose with that saddle, and they're going to walk, they're going to trot, but they're darn sure going to lope around with that saddle too, okay? <clears throat> that saddle is going to feel a lot different to them loping around. <clears throat> the manner in which they stride out and how those cinches feel at a lope than they do at a trot. So there's the first saddling. So for the sake of time, I'm not going to do it, but typically, babe, on a colt like this, the best thing you can do is move him around a little bit, pull the saddle off, and then put it right back on, move him around again. One of the best things you can do with a young horse, the first saddling, I mean in the first day you saddle him, is saddle him more than one time. Okay, because once he wore it around, he didn't have an issue with it. It was when he first started to, to leave that spot and feel them cinches. <clears throat> since we're filming here today, and since this horse lives with us and the approach that we're going to take with all the stuff we're going to do with him, I'm not going to do that today. But <clears throat> I need everybody that's watching this to understand so what I do, I spent enough time and got him in the frame of mind where he wanted to stay put. Okay, so he stood there just fine for me to saddle him. I didn't ask him to leave. He left on his own, but he didn't go very many steps. And then he snapped. Okay, so it's, it's that mentality. Once the cinches got tight and then he walked off. So I should think about that. Once he's worn it for a while, it's a completely different mindset. So if you saddle him two or three times, four times, five times, you, every time you saddle him and pull them cinches up and he walks off from a standstill, he's right back in that same spot. Gives him a chance to feel that again. I think he's going to be pretty good minded. He just needs somebody to show him. Just hasn't been handled a whole lot, so you can't blame him for any of that. 
One thing I will do, we will tie this breast collar on him, let him feel that, and then we'll pull it all off. All right, cameraman said we're about out of storage on our SD card, so. <clears throat> Again, coming in here close, I just wanna have a short enough hole to where if he does spook, I can kinda control the front end so the hind end doesn't doesn't take me out. I think that's about good. All I want to do is just tie this breast collar on here. We'll turn him loose one more time and then we'll pull it all off and call it a day for him. Now, what he did when, when he first walked off, that's why I didn't start with a breast collar. Because <clears throat> I've had them, just me trying to put the breast collar on, I've had that cause them to get scared and blow up and they're feeling them cinches for the first time. Me putting that breast collar on, trying to snap it underneath, it's not a spot where I want to be standing when they first move off. See, that's, that's a lot different. Him leaving that spot. Not that that breast collar necessarily is going to cause near as big an issue as them cinches. But you just well put all that stuff on day one and let them feel it and then not ever have another issue from there on. How much time we got, cameraman? Six minutes? Okay. <clears throat> I'll see if I can't get all this off of him in six minutes time. <clears throat> no, 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 no. Uh, <clears throat> you saw what he did, okay? No, <clears throat> I appreciate the thought, but this needs to be between me and him, just so if, <clears throat> it's not that I can keep any of that from happening, okay? But if it's just me and him, then it's gonna be a lot easier for me to keep myself safe when, he, when something goes bad, where maybe I'm not aware of where you're standing and I'm trying to save my own hide and I steer him right over the top of you. Does that make sense? Not to mention, <clears throat> a lot of times bringing another person in he wasn't used to that when I was putting it on him. It might be a little too much for him. So it's just a safer scenario in my mind for your sake, not necessarily for his sake, for your sake. Now I'm going to go ahead since he's pretty quiet here, I'm gonna go ahead and pull these cinches all the way off right here. So I'm short enough on my lead rope here just so I can keep him from tipping his nose way over there to his left side and losing sight of where I'm standing.
And then again, like I said, if it wasn't for time's sake with the camera, we'd give him a minute, let him think about that, and then we'd put it back on him, move him off again. I don't think there's a better approach for a horse to let them get comfortable with the saddle. I love to turn them loose so they understand, listen, if you're gonna buck, go buck. Let's do this until you don't think that needs to be your option anymore. So I don't have to try to talk you out of it. Let's, let's deal with that right now and not let that be something that carries with us for the next two months, okay? <clears throat> All right, now I'll let you come back out here. Yeah, come on back out here. Thank you guys for tuning in to this episode of Riding Horses. What do you think? What do you think of him? You can rub on him a little bit. Just stay right where you're at and rub on him. <clears throat> so you walk up here. There's now a saddle on the, on the ground over there, okay? That wasn't there before. Mm -hmm. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think about this. He's going to watch that. So I'm going to stay between me and, and that, stay between him and that saddle. Instead of you walking over here, he's looking at that. You see where I'm going with that? Yeah. So you just got to be aware of stuff like that. It's going to be really fun when we put the first ride on and I let her be the one to crawl on him. You guys will want to tune in for that one. No. Teaser, baby. No. All right. Thank you guys for tuning into this episode of Riding Horses. We'll see you guys next time.